When I was 15, our family decided one winter we should go camping. And in Arizona, winters weren't piercing cold. So we drove up into the mountains. And while I wasn't on board with camping, I was forced to go. But once we were in this dark, empty forest, only thing in sight were tall, dry trees and slight frost along the tips of the grass. I was bored that night and wanted to explore a little while my family was setting up the tent. So I dove into the dark depths of the night. A chilling wind whispered through the trees, sending shivers down my spine. And obviously I was scared. Who wouldn't be? But my foolish self decided to continue. As the moon hung like a cold, pale eye in the sky, casting eerie shadows that danced across the ground, I found myself drawn to the dilapidated house at the end of this long hallway made of trees, a place that gave off horrible feelings. Curiosity gnawed at me, propelling me towards the decaying front door. The wood cracked under my weight as I pushed it open, revealing a hallway cloaked in darkness. The air was thick with a musty scent, like decay and time itself. I flicked on my flashlight, its beam cutting through the blackness, revealing walls covered in peeling wallpaper. As I ventured, Deeper into the house, the floorboards groaned beneath my footsteps, as if protesting my intrusion. The hallway led me to a door half ajar, revealing a room bathed in a sticky red glow. My heart raced as I stepped inside, my breath catching in my throat at the sight before me. Candles lined the room, casting flickering shadows that danced upon the walls. In the center of the room lay a gruesome tableau, a body torn apart in the most horrifying way imaginable. Blood stained the floor, forming gruesome patterns that seemed to pulse with a malevolent energy. The stench was overwhelming, a sickly sweet mixture of iron and decay that threatened to make me gag. I couldn't tear my eyes away from the macabre sight, limbs twisted at unnatural angles, viscera strewn across the floor like some twisted work of art, the walls themselves seemed to ooze with dread, as if the very essence of the room had been tainted by the violence that had occurred here. A low guttural sound echoed from the shadows and I spun around, my flashlight beam revealing nothing but darkness. My heart pounded in my chest, a primal fear taking hold of me as I realized I was not alone. Something was lurking in the corners, something that reveled in the pain and suffering that had taken place here. A whisper brushed against my ear, icy fingers trailing down my spine. My breath hitched as the words seep it into my mind, a litany of horrors, a symphony of despair, panic clawed at me, urging me to flee, but my feet felt rooted to the blood-soaked floor. In that moment, I knew that I had stumbled upon something beyond comprehension, a darkness that defined the boundaries of our world. As the room seemed to close in around me, I realized that the horrors of the house were not confined to its decaying walls. They had taken root in my very soul, forever binding me to the malevolent presence that hungered for more. I went to therapy for months after that night and still have nightmares and visions that bring me back into the horrid house. And even years later, I still have no idea what went down there.